Art has been a mystery and a joy for millions since the beginning of man. Is art meaningful to you, or is it a strange and distant part of our culture? Then let art historian Richard Love and his guests make art come alive. By exploring every avenue of the American art community, Love focuses on its makers and shakers, its traditions and its innovations. You may not always agree, but you will like what you see on American Art Forum. Now here's Richard Love. I'm glad you tuned in tonight. Don't forget to have a pencil and paper handy later when I give you my selection of local and national exhibitions and events. Now, about tonight's show. You're going to learn how someone prepares himself for a career in commercial art, how he's trained by experienced professionals who carefully design the curriculum to produce high caliber artists, commercial artists. One of the leading commercial art schools in the country is the American Academy of Art here in Chicago. Tonight, my guests and I will discuss the education of a commercial artist and how the academy differs from most other art schools. Joining me in this discussion are Irving Shapiro, the director of the academy, and David Becker, a recent academy graduate and now an illustrator with J. Walter Thompson. Gentlemen, welcome to American Art Forum. Thank you. Thank you. Commercial art is very different from fine art. On the other hand, the two can almost not be separated. Uh, I've had uh, other, other guests on the show, and we've tried to ferret this issue out, so that won't be our object tonight. What we want to do is give our viewers some idea of how a person is trained for this complex uh, function in art. Um, Irv Shapiro, nobody could know it better than you. You've been doing it a long time. Long time. Guiding the curriculum as it is. Right. Uh, when did you start uh, at, the, at the Academy? Were you a, an art student there? Yes. My first uh, experience with the American Academy of Art was as a student in 1944 and was asked as I completed uh, my preliminary studies to assist and teach. So I've been teaching there since, in various schedules, since 1945. Now that's during the war. Uh, how long had it been going before you? Uh, were there. The school was founded in 1923, and uh, so we are in our, what, 62nd year at this right. time. Yeah. Right. Now, all right, you were uh, uh, perhaps not a prodigy, but someone whose talent was recognized and, and became a teacher, And but now you're the director. Right. And right. how long have you been doing that? Since 1969. Mm -hmm. uh, now, when a young person, uh, David is here and we're going we're gonna to get the get it straight from the horse's mouth, <laughs> but when a young person comes to the academy, what do you, as the person who, or the group of people who allow uh, him or her in, what do you look for? I mean, besides an inherent talent. All right. It is really what might be summed up as being inherent talent, Richard. However, uh, there's a mistaken impression that talent is the, above all else, the, the ultimate importance. Uh, certainly it is a critical importance, but what has to be coupled with that as an importance is the, the, the desire, the energy, the dedication. We have seen over the years um, so many, many instances of, of talent that would be perhaps barely measurable, but combined with a dedication to the development of that talent. Mm -hmm. And this is what will have put many of our graduates into um, stellar roles as professionals beyond their schooling. So it's the, uh, when we speak of talent at the time that we are reviewing the, the possibility of that applicant student, what we look for is something that is measurable as talent as well as these other ingredients. All right, now, now supposing I, I'm, a, I'm a young lad, I'm, I've graduated high school, I don't necessarily want to go to college, I'd rather just jump right into a commercial art field. Um, I can draw well, but I know nothing about the application. I don't know anything about package design or art boards or right. anything like that. How do you bring a, a young person from the base beginnings all the way through that? What, what is, how long is that period of construction? How do, you, how do you go about that? If the drawing skill can be recognized on the part of an incoming student, that is really the, the super importance. A, an, an observation of a drawing skill as rudimentary as it might be at that point. Now, as the student then enters into his or her studies, uh, we have a requirement that the first full year of study is to be devoted to the development of not only broader understanding, but the development of skills as well. 
So there will be a, a very concentrated, and David can testify to this, a very concentrated experience in matters of observing and applying color. So it is the, the, the creative along with the technical? Oh, absolutely, uh -huh. absolutely. So and two double pronged. Uh, it has to be. I, I think that it's a serious mistake for anyone to feel that the, the technical, as you put it, is something that should be put in the wings. The technical is a great deal of the craft of right. the artist. Then, you're, then your school, the American Academy, differs from a lot of other fine art schools, where I can tell you from my own experience in the past, having been a teacher, uh, that a lot of times the whole emphasis, or most of the emphasis, is placed on creative and not necessarily on technical skills, especially drawing. All right. At that point, I would, I would have to ask of what value is the creative energy if it hasn't been channeled with uh, the ability on the part of that individual to, in some craftsmanship fashion, express the energy. Because in some schools, they say that learning to represent on two-dimensional surface, or even three-dimensionally, some object from nature is unimportant. The only thing that's necessary is the manipulation of line, form, and color. How do you feel about that? Well, we could. How much time do we have for, for me Not to respond? Here, but, <laughs> but but for the commercial art purposes, it's absolutely impossible not to work with representational imagery, isn't it? it you have it, to. It is uh, to some degree. It, it can be discussed at length. But I wouldn't I wouldn't confine it to just the commercial arts. Mm -hmm. Uh, our feeling is that those in the fine arts have to establish a base, a platform of what would be perhaps academic in thinking, but the, the, the range of skills that will provide some uh, opportunity for that individual then to fly beyond that level, but the level will have to have been established first, otherwise you're, you're kicking at clouds. Mm -hmm. um, there, there are, as you know, many people who feel that the fine artist or the artist, let's say, uh, whether it be fine or Correct. commercial, not right. be fettered with anything in the way of, of any restraints at all yeah. uh, in order to be fully expressive. Well, we argue that. We, we feel that for there to be an expression of whatever that artist has to offer, there would have to be the devices created, the tools honed to a fine degree. You're looking for discipline. Absolutely. And it's a, 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 of prime importance. Doesn't that not throw you back to the old academic standards that were put forth in the 19th century to a great degree? It does, but uh, with any observation at all, you can come to recognize that it also puts us forward to what we can see coming in the balance of this century and the next. Uh, there has been what you might be described as a vacuum in uh, observing the value of of uh, the classic. Sure. The pendulum is swinging. David, you were a part of this whole regiment, this routine, when you were a student. Now you're a professional. You have, you have gained from having learned at the American Academy. To sum it up, is it academic? Is it, uh, is it, is it uh, somewhere between the typical fine arts school and the commercial arts school? Give, give us your synopsis, your, your analysis, now that you can stand back and look at it. I think it mostly was discipline, really getting disciplined on the fine art drawing, I mean drawing skills, just really getting the drawing. And I had um, taken only fine art courses for the three or four years that I was there. And in the last semester I had taken an illustration class, but most of it was just painting, drawing, life drawing every day, you know, for four years. And um, I didn't know that I was going to go into um, commercial art at the time. Yeah, so. So it wasn't a, a simple matter. I'll tell you what, uh, we're going to take a, a, a quick break here, and we're going to come back. But I want you to think about that carefully. Go back in your mind's eye of all you did, because we're going to tell our viewers about it. Uh, stick around. We'll be back on American Art Forum to discuss more about the education of a commercial artist. For those of you who just joined us, uh, our discussion focuses on the training of a commercial artist. And one of my guests tonight is David Becker, who is a recent graduate of the American Academy here in Chicago. And um, we, uh, I should say, I asked him just before we took a break as to, uh, to give us some idea of this rigorous training. And I think that's best to say that it is disciplined and rigorous, isn't it? Yeah, it's um, a lot of hard work. Why it's, do you uh, say that? Why is it? What do you mean? Are you forced to, to constantly observe and constantly draw and, and render correctly so that people... Well, there's a lot involved. When, I mean, because when you go in, you think you know a lot from high school. You think you're, you know, a big shot. You know, you go in, um, and you really realize that all these, you know, instructors who are so professional, they know where you're at. 
and um, there's things that you thought you knew, but really there's so much more. You mean you the, find out something? You find out a lot. <laughs> right. These you know instructors have, and I think they know where you're at, so they really, from where you're at, they'll let you you know let you go on. And um, there's almost too much you know in the art form. And actually, you know, when you're doing those life drawings up there, there's um, so much to think about. You know, and then you're at a point where you think you're you know where you um. You want to you want to do really well, but you can't because you really don't know where you're at. Exactly. Now you work from still lives, I suppose. Uh, you work from nude uh, live models. Um, I some, I'm sure you had composition and design. Can you tell us? I, I know you had work with color. Uh, every everything. I mean, can you name some of the classes you had quickly? Just thinking um, over. It. Well, there's a fundamentals class, which is the first class which goes through everything. Like what? Um, what is a fundamentals how, class? Um, how to hold a pencil? <laughs> no, well, yeah, how that, to I guess a needed eraser and all um, that stuff. Everything, uh, composition and design, um, perspective, um, design and color. Uh, what is it? Design. I think if you really want to know the whole um, fundamentals, you'd have to go to school and actually well, ask the course. Well, of course, you have to jump into <laughs> it. But it takes a long time. How long does it take, Irv? A year or so? It's programmed for the first year of study. And uh, as David just mentioned, uh, the fundamental study, which includes all that he spoke of, plus uh, the variety of techniques becoming uh, conversant with the, the various tools that will be the opportunities for expression beyond. And then figure drawing three hours every day in that first year of working oh, I, with the model. In a way, I, I don't mean to imply the wrong or to convey the wrong idea to our viewers, but in a way, you're almost separating the men from the boys, aren't you? I mean, you're seeing see. who has the, the perseverance and the ability to, uh, to, to succeed in this level, aren't you? Yes. Uh, what is, is interesting is that sometimes the men are not necessarily those that are greatly gifted but those who are perhaps even minimally gifted. Persevering. And persevering. Mm -hmm. Because we've seen the reverse side of that coin. We've seen those with dazzling portfolios as they come into school, but not that sense of purpose and direction, and mm -hmm. uh, they fizzle, they dwindle. I had a friend uh, probably 15 years ago, 20 years ago, who uh, he and I used to sit at the easel together and paint. I was at a different place in teaching, and, and he was at your school, at the American Academy of Art. And what a wonderful portraitist. You know, he couldn't get himself up in the morning and get on that train and go to school, and he, mm -hmm. and he flunked out. Mm -hmm. uh, he unfortunately uh, didn't continue. But, but I, 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 the idea I get from the American Academy, everyone I know there, is that it does require tremendous discipline. Now, the second level, the second level. I would like, as we discuss this, to give our viewers some idea of what this is all about. Now, our first slide is one which shows the advertising design class. Now, when someone comes in, now, now this is Dave Zillis. He's a teacher there. Right. And uh, is his whole job geared to advertising design? Well, it is, and substantiated by the fact that he has a 30-year history as art director with another advertising agency of prominence, Leo Burnett. Leo Burnett. Right. J. Walter Thompson, Leo Burnett, two of the largest in the country, most prestigious. Uh, let's take a look at the other side of the coin. Uh, our next slide is the oil painting class, the fine art part of, of uh, the American Academy. Uh, who teaches uh, here? Who are some of the instructors? Uh, we have Ted Smuscevich, Al Algaminas, Pam Swanson. They each teach oil painting. And incidentally, we, we look upon the painting classes as being perhaps uh, what would be uh, the fine art direction, but oil painters as well are perhaps going to be illustrators and even designers, sure. where painting will sure. have been of importance as part of their makeup, but not their, their uh, major makeup. All of those elements figure into, right. into the makeup of a picture, its design, its composition. David, did you take um, uh, oil painting when you were there? Yeah, two years of oil painting. And did you work in watercolor and acrylic? Um, and watercolor also. Any sculpture? No sculpture. All two dimensional. <laughs> Um, yeah. When you started, did you have the idea that you were going to be uh, an illustrator or not? No, I wanted to be a fine artist. I mm -hmm. wanted to be a painter. What changed you in your, in your mind's eye, in your direction? What got you off in the other direction? Uh, I think money was the... Um. <laughs> so, you didn't want to starve in front of the star. old coal stove in a, in a, in a tenement building. Though I still want to do the fine art work, though I just want to get back to that a little bit later with the money than so, having the money. So, like many fine artists, so over the year, you have an opportunity here to make money in art, still exercising 
uh, your ability, and then you can go in any direction you wish. You know, that's exactly what happened to me. <laughs> I, I started out as a painter mm -hmm. and thought and got fascinated with other people and went into art history and found that it was more lucrative. Let's look at an illustration class, the kind you were in, David. Uh, that's our, our next slide. And uh, Dennis uh, uh, Dieslick is, uh, is the instructor here, is he not, uh, Irv? Right, on the left. What, uh, what, what in the world, I mean, when we're talking about illustration, a lot of it is thought. It's not just, it's not just uh, uh, taking the, the idea and preparing a storyboard. There's a lot of thought, creativity involved. Mm -hmm. uh, does Mr. Dieslick teach that too? Uh, yeah, not to the degree that would be, um, well, Dennis's is thrust is illustration, which is pictorialization, which is a tangent to and maybe even overlapping fine art as as we recognize what's happening within the worlds of painting and illustration today. Um, I, I see you looking at something now, Richard, right. that uh, is in more at this moment in David's direction where he has brought up to a level of client presentation what we call the layout. Now, when we say client presentation, what we're going to do is, is, is show this. This is an example of your work, David. Yeah. And um, we're not talking about a finished artboard which is going to be used for uh, reproduction. We're talking about client presentation, as you right, said, Irv. Right, right. Now, uh, let, let me hold this up for our viewers to see. That's, that's what I'd like to do. Now, let me, let me get this around here to, to our camera, and then we'll show them uh, what we're talking about for client presentation. Now, tell us something about this, David. Uh, how does something like this come into being? A client comes to you and says, I have an idea, some a rough idea. Uh, help put it, pictorialize yeah, it's, it. It's, it's, he, she comes in with a tracing paper. This is a lady art director. And she came in and had an idea for this, and she wanted it really feminine because of the title, A Love Story. And um, Appropriate for this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and she comes in, and she lets you go. She just tells you what she, she wants in it, certain things she wants, like the cakes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, you take it. But now it leaves your your easel, your drawing board, drawing as, board. It, as it were. It, it's no more than a concept, an idea, and someone else will embellish upon this. Another artist, another group of artists, another team, as it were. Uh -huh. Doesn't that leave you kind of cold? Here you are throwing out the football. You don't know if there anybody ever caught the pass. A lot of people ask me that, but you know that's my work. That you know that's what I want to do is be a fine. It's sort of fine art to me. Okay. To me, I consider that fine art. Okay. I'm not the one that's saying idea, but that's not why I got the job. I came to draw. I understand. Well, we're going to do something else right now. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll return. So stick around when we talk more about commercial art. If you've ever wondered what a commercial artist has to do to prepare himself for that complex field, you might find out a little bit about it as we uh, discuss this topic with David Becker and Irving Shapiro. Um, Irv, you have had many, many, many young men and women uh, of David's caliber and type who've gone on to become uh, well-known professionals, some very well-known, some not so well-known, mm -hmm. uh, who are uh, uh, how, do, how do you see your graduates? I mean, do they, uh, is there any kind of a uh, study you've ever made? Do they, most of them go on to commercial art, or is, if you, if you had a handle on that at all? Well, it's curious that you, you mentioned that, Richard, because we're in the process of, with, we hope within the next year or so, having a reunion, which will bring to the surface so many of the people who will have been our, our past students. Hopefully, David's going to attend as one of our younger <laughs> and more recent graduates. Right. Uh, but we can go back, which, uh, speaking of illustration, for example, the, um, uh, there are so many of the, the prominent illustrators of, of both the past as well as the present who have gone through our, our classrooms. And I'm, I'm drawing a blank at the moment. Uh, who was the Coca-Cola illustrator, David? The, um, well, one of the people I'd like to talk about here, maybe that'll jog your memory a little bit, uh, is has to do with the founding of this school. Uh, Mr. Young, a graphic designer. It's a it's an amazing conglomeration of ideas and discipline and attitude here. Another one is is Timmons, mm -hmm. a painter, a fine art painter, as it were, and and Clark, a commercial illustrator. So so you still tend to tend to blend that, but the commercial seems to have taken a certain 
uh, oh, what should I say, priority direction? Is that true? That has been in the past and, and is so uh, at this time as well. The name that I couldn't remember a second ago is, is Haddon Sundblom, who created the yes. Coca-Cola Santa Claus, yes, one of our earliest graduates. Mm -hmm. Coming up to uh, present day levels, there are names that would, would not be as easily recognized because they haven't been around for as long, of course. But there's a young man whose name is Thomas Blackshear out uh, on the West Coast right now, still this side of 30 that is doing phenomenal things mm -hmm. with uh, his works in illustration in the motion picture industry, uh, book jacket illustration and the like. That's got to be gratifying. It is. It's got to be great. It, it's more than gratifying. Uh, it it um, really uh, has, provides one with a sense of purpose having been, if not accomplished, at least approached. Were there some, some people whom you looked up to at the Art Academy other than the teachers? I mean, uh, ideas and styles and motivations? Uh. There were, and there were graduates off from the Academy. Richard Schmidt, for me, was like his book. I would every day look at his book and just... Like the saint. The saint. What uh, a yeah. wonderful Mr. painter. Mr. Shapiro. I mean, yes. he still yes, is. I mean, <laughs> Of course. What? Uh, uh, so different. Uh, Irv's work compared to Richard Schmitz. Uh, he works with such a heavy, fully loaded brush and, and some marvelous impasto pigment. On the other hand, uh, there's a certain continuity in that uh, you have a slice of life, which you see, you go after, and you portray. So many times, we don't find that sense of purpose in a lot of fine art imagery. And that, I think, is reflective of the, perhaps reflective. I don't and want to be too analytical. And also the people you work around, your student, you know, your student body that I worked with, real great people, you know, all together in one school. There is a good sense of camaraderie. Yeah, I've that's, been that's there. Sort of... And people seem to be friendly. They like each other. That's a nice, I think if you can say something nice about a school, uh, that, that seems to be evident yeah. there. I've, and I've seen older people. I've seen people in their 60s and 70s there. And 80s. And 80s. And is 80s. that right? right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Henry White is a, is a friend of mine. Uh, he's from Crown Point, Indiana, and, and uh, he's a student there. Uh, and uh, really hadn't had any art training before, but went, jumped right into it and did a good job. Yeah. And not only is it, is it nice to have those qualities around, it almost is, is more than a little helpful in encouraging the emergence of the abilities that are there on the premises. Sure. Let's put on another slide, the graphics class with Jim Shea, uh, and, and show our, our viewers what they might expect to find at the American Art Academy. What does Jim Shea, um, how does he center on mostly design and layout, doesn't he? Uh, lettering, graphics, and design rather than, uh, more so than layout, and Jim, too, is a freelance designer. Um, all of our faculty have professional backgrounds. But he's a full-time uh, teacher full -time there. Instructor. Let's look at some student work, actual illustration. Um, this is three-dimensional uh, work, is it not? Right. Out of the graphic studies, what you see at the lower left is package design, a, a design for six-pack of a beverage. Mm -hmm. And then uh, some more graduate work. Uh, uh, in this case, no, I'm sorry, uh, another illustration, uh, a student. Current student, student work. right. A, a modern application of a, of a ballerina, is yeah. it not? Beautifully yes. colored. I, I like the fact that you've used that word modern, Richard, because it, uh, we we might be thought of as being uh, a little bit of an anachronism, but we are very current and very uh, observant of what the current needs are. Anyone who doesn't see yeah. modernity, or the, uh, the modern flavor mm -hmm. in the commercial world today is not paying attention to where art is right. going. That's, right. that's absolutely, let's look at the, the last piece, which is some graduate work, and then uh, this, this will be the last one we're gonna show. Uh, wow, what a powerful rendition in many ways, huh? Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the kind of, of work that you work that you had, David, to prove yourself with. Uh, you and all of the students there. Uh, if you had it to do over again, would you go in the same direction, or would you stick right in the fine arts as you originally planned? Um, probably stick in the same way, fine mm -hmm. art, but letting that you know open door to um, commercial art, anyways. You know, just if it's there, you know, it's there for you to ha take. You know, it, I just didn't take it at a time, and I would maybe. But. You didn't have to run around with a portfolio from place to place. You helped, got some job placement help from the American Academy. From the, yeah, Academy, from the American Academy. You? They um, they give you addresses to go, you know, interviews to go on. Because mm -hmm. I guess the people come to them. Right. To get the and that and that sort of opens the doors, and that's how you got ended up at J. Walter Thompson. 
Yeah. Now, are you low man on the totem pole? Does everybody give you the the, the well, bad stuff or, <laughs> or, or, or not? It doesn't it work? I, I guess way. at first you, you always have to start, start, out start somewhere. <laughs> you uh, never did that, did you, Irv? You, yes, I did. Did, did I you sure have did. to? Well, at, at, at that time, and we're talking about a couple of centuries back, after <laughs> right. uh, there were apprenticeships. And, and I served an apprenticeship with uh, Chicago Studios uh, for a, a given period of time and then began as a freelance designer and illustrator uh, with my own studio. Oh, I didn't realize that you had your own studio and then, and then uh, branched out from there. Right. There was a, 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 a period of time where I was, uh, we at that time called it layout. I was a layout artist. Uh, now they are designers. I was an illustrator and I was a painter. It was a, a, a melting pot of all of these involvements. Which you still are. You still yes. paint and exhibit throughout America. That's right. I know. And, That's right. and uh, your watercolors haven't been former president of the American Watercolor Society? Uh, no, I'm a member of the American Watercolor Society. I would like to have been uh, president. <laughs> I thought you were president. No. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. No. I, okay, I've got that mixed up. Right. Uh, I will say this, the variety that I have noticed in the American Art Academy makes it very different. Um, I, I think it's a, it's a show we could, we could be on the air for for a couple of hours. Unfortunately, we're out of time. So we're, I'm going to have to say goodbye to you gentlemen, but perhaps invite you back again sometime. It's been great having you. Thank you. It'll be our pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, that's it for this evening, but uh, it was certainly uh, good having you, and I want you to return again next Saturday night on American Art Forum at 1030 uh, when we'll have brand new topics. See you then. Uh, visit us quickly, uh, 1030, Saturday night, uh, next week, American Art Forum. <laughs>